Hello and welcome to another installment of our Women in STEM series. My name is Kaylee Peel and I'm Manager of Strategic Partnerships for the Linda Hall Library. Today our guest is Angie Ladwig from the Kansas City National Security Campus managed by Honeywell FMNT. Angie, welcome and thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Well, as we're starting to dive into this conversation, I would love it if you gave a backstory on your career trajectory and how you came to be at KCNSC now. Yeah, absolutely. So as I've shared before, I have been there for over 20 years, which is an anomaly for my generation. Uh, most of my peers, especially my engineering girlfriends, they've managed to jump around to different companies, multiple companies at this point in time. One of the reasons why I've, I've stayed at KCNSC for nearly 20 years is the opportunities it has afforded me. Um, I currently am a people manager, technical manager for our systems engineering organization, and I have the privilege to manage and work with um, some amazing engineers and analysts. Prior to that, I was in our program management organization, and I also spent uh, many years in our materials engineering organization. And so one of the things that even though I didn't think that this was what I was getting into. It's been amazing to have an engineering degree that's allowed me to take so many different opportunities, take advantage of so many different opportunities. Certainly when I chose engineering, it was a little bit of a happenstance. I knew I liked math, I knew I liked science. I wasn't necessarily um, getting the best grades at either of those subjects, but I really enjoyed it. Um, and I wasn't necessarily encouraged or discouraged from engineering. Um, it, it seemingly was something that would certainly provide me some financial independence. Um, at the time, probably the only information that was being provided to me and my peers in high school was that you make good money. Um, and then tying that together with some great teachers, as well as a few people in my family, men, that were engineers, I thought, okay, I'll go ahead and give this a try. And so I graduated from Ruskin High School um, and went to Mizzou and studied chemical engineering. Um, certainly had to learn some really key study skills that I hadn't built during high school, and so I struggled. It was really hard. Um, and I don't necessarily know that that was communicated to me in advance. I think that would have been a valuable bit of information that that engineering school is very hard, but is incredibly rewarding. Um, required a lot of ta tenacity, and also me building a network um, with my peers in engineering school um, that certainly I've carried forward throughout the duration of my career as well. That's awesome, thank you for sharing that. I liked hearing um, that you know you might not have been particularly grade-wise great at math and science, but you still persevered and moved toward that. I think that's a great thing um, for young women who watch this series to know um, that you know, not to be deterred or scared, that, that, that idea of failure. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think failure and risk, a lot of women that we've talked to in this series often talk about that and how right. it's different for women compared to men in the same industry, right? So thank you for being uh, vulnerable and sharing that. Um, looking back though, so you've been at KCNSC for a number of years, but it sounds like you've done a few different things and that career trajectory has changed a little bit. Um, so that's been, that's been moving forward and changing, but what has your personal experience been like as a woman in the STEM industry? Mm -hmm. You know, you were um, around a lot of men growing up who were in these fields, and I'm sure that it was that situation too, you know, in your professional career. What has that been like and has it changed? Oh, absolutely, mm -hmm. and I would say that I, Theme-wise, um, I picked up on some themes over the years in terms of it is almost to the point where I'm desensitized to being the only female in a meeting. Um, and on the flip side, though, a, a new behavior has kind of started that when I find myself in a room with other women at KCNSC, we notice it. Everybody immediately notices it. And we take a moment to celebrate each other and the coincidence of us being in a room together, um, just us, us females. It, you know. KCNSC, engineering, very heavily male-dominated profession. I fortunately have been in, in a position where I haven't felt those gender inequalities. Um, if anything, I've been heavily supported by mentors, both males and females. Certainly gravitate toward female mentors, and they have certainly poured into me, and it's been a privilege to be able to provide that back to other early in career uh, female engineers. Um, I've also noticed, I picked up on some of the, I certainly dislike some of the adjectives that women, probably professionally, maybe not specifically engineering, but again, there's a pretty big gender disparity in terms of women being considered too emotional or caring too much. 
and personally, I think that's one of the reasons why we need more gender equality within engineering because one of the reasons why females are needed in this profession is because we have a different way of thinking. We approach problems differently, and with that, obviously our brains are fundamentally formed, physiologically formed differently, and I think with that comes a deeper level of caring that maybe presents itself. Um, and I, I would love to for us to get away from the fact that we can't care about the work that we do and we can't let that show. I think that that's, that's really important that, you know, if we're spending time away from our families or from our personal lives, that we care deeply about what we're working on and what we're doing. That's very insightful and I totally agree with you. Um, thank you for sharing that. So the library's collections, um, you know, it allows our community and our programming allows our community to learn from and be inspired by women pioneers in STEM. Um, and your point about, you know, uh, mentorship and being more involved in the community that we have here, you're mm -hmm. doing a great job at that. Um, would you mind sharing ways in which we can further collaborate and further support the STEM ecosystem here with, you know, bringing on a new generation of women and men um, to foster a more collaborative ecosystem? Absolutely. I think one of the biggest things that any engineer in this community can do is make themselves available for mentorship. Um, being a part of that networking that we need very early in career or even students that are considering STEM careers, we need to make ourselves available to them because what better way to solidify or help them understand that engineering is a viable career choice for them, but to be able to share one-on-one -on -one the experiences that they've had mm -hmm. so that you don't get surprised, for example, going into college and realizing, wow, this is a tremendous amount of work. Um, certainly don't want to scare the younger generation a a away from some of those realities, but I think that's helpful. It helps them mentally prepare um, and then again start leaning heavily into building that network for themselves. Um, so being intentional about making yourself available to support um, early in career STEM individuals or people that are considering it, I think that's the one of the most important things. And yes, everyone is very busy. Um, and so if you get, you know, for example, if somebody pings you for an opportunity um, and you're not available, you know, find them somebody else to work with, right? Utilize your network um, to make sure that that one opportunity isn't a missed opportunity. That's a great takeaway. I will definitely put that in my back pocket when I'm talking to other corporate partners and such. Um, so what is something that, you know, you work with a lot in community advocacy, as I mentioned, um, the Society for Women Engineers, um, and as, as a mentor, I assume. So what are the things that you, what's the advice that you give to young women who are interested in pursuing a career similar to yours or in under, other industries within STEM? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think one of the first things that we talked about was just making sure they, that girls know that it's okay if it's hard or maybe you don't have a natural talent for it. If you enjoy it, that's the most important thing. Um, having, again, a, a deep appreciation or care for the work that you're doing um, is more important than whether you get the best grades. Um, I think that it's important that you know having a 4.0 is certainly fantastic and certainly tells an employer um, that you know how to work hard. However, it is really helpful as somebody that recruits and, and attracts talent and brings talent onto my team that you're also diversified in your activities, that you've taken advantage of different opportunities to be you know, a president of a club, um, that you know how to attract and, and gain membership to a club that you have. Um, so yes, there is, a, there is a good balance to be had of focusing on your grades while also taking, taking the opportunity to gather other skills that are going to be really beneficial um, when you enter the workforce. I also think it's really important um, to advocate really early on to find a company or organization um, that allows you to grow and that you can grow with it, has many opportunities, has an environment where where coaching and mentoring is just standard for the you know, par for the course. Um, that has very much been my experience at KCNSC is that not only has there been a multitude of opportunities, it's created good work-life balance for myself and my peers, and it's an environment where we're also encouraged to support our community in STEM functions as well. Those are the things that I'm really excited about too, on those environments, those intentional environments that are being stewarded in companies in the region. Um, we're launching a business leadership council. It was just launched this month, and we're talking to a lot of companies about how we can, you know, not just build pipelines to talent, but build an environments where we're supporting mid-level professionals, and we're mm -hmm. doing a lot of great, you know, collaborative and holistic work in the region and in the ecosystem. So it's very exciting, and that leads me to my last question. Sure. Um, so, from your point of view, what does the future of STEM look like, and what are you excited about? 
So we have a long ways to go. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think that we're putting all the right measures in place. I'm certainly excited here in Kansas City, the number of opportunities that are made available to our young students, um, certainly through Project Lead the Way and KC STEM Alliance. Um, I've been privileged to be a part of a great organization um, that myself and a fellow engineer at KCNSC was able to start. Um, it's called Introduce a Girl to Engineering Day. Um, we're getting ready to have our 13th event in 2023. Um, and that's been a wonderful opportunity opportunity to, one, focus on our high school aged girls. Studies show that it's really important to capture middle school students and capture their attention and their interest in STEM then. I still think there's something to be said about trying to catch students that are in high school that are right on that precipice of making a decision about what they want to do with their lives. And so we have a day long event where we can, we basically partner them with professional STEM female mentors. They spend the whole day together. They go get an opportunity to do a hands-on experiment. They learn about the different engineering disciplines. And we also take them around to essentially a, a career fair, an industry fair, where they get that opportunity to start learning how to network, how to walk up to a professional and have some dialogue, ask some questions. I think those skills, you cannot start them early enough. And so being able to expose the students to one, in real-time engineers that they can dialogue with the entire day, they're getting to, to interface with a ton of other engineers throughout the course of the day as well. And so that's been a privilege to be able to be a part of that organization, um, bring that to Kansas City, it's a national e-week initiative, um, and to see it grow from you know 50 high school students to upwards of 300. Yeah, experiential learning, it's been proven that it's really, really effective. So I'm very excited for that. I'm excited for your upcoming event. And I really appreciate you taking the time, Angie. Thank you so much. Thank you.